All right, um, before we start today, what I was thinking of doing, um, do we have any blackjack questions? Or do you know? Do you just want to play blackjack all, all, you know, for bonus points or something? <laughs> no, no, just kidding, people out in YouTube land. We would not do that. Um, and seriously though, any questions before we continue? I might have something to for you. Okay, that's cool. That's cool. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to play the flag game. And I looked. I think I did things a little out of order according to the syllabus. I think I was going to, supposed to do this like about a week and a half ago, um, but um, we did some other things. I think normally I do the blackjack game after this, but whatever, it's all good. Um, let's run the flag game, and this is a great test of how well you know the flags of the world. Um, and then we'll look at the code that does this. So, let's go and run this. The one thing that happens to me when I pull up these old Dito applications is I really have to Google the errors that I get. I don't have a, how do I want to say it, I don't have a formula of like what I do to get it right. I try to do a gradle sync and a build and Based on the error messages I get, I just Google and find it. Typically, I do a clean and rebuild, and then I try it. So this one, I had to struggle a little with to get it to work, but uh, based on Googling and all that, we, we did get it to work. All right, so let me go and run this. All right, we'll notice a couple things. First of all, we have um, several buttons, and we have an image. And this is a country, the flag of Egypt, Mozambique, New Zealand, or Ethiopia. Any guesses? This doesn't count for points. I'm gonna go with I'm gonna go with New Zealand. Okay, what did you what were you gonna go with? Mozambique. Oh, okay, let's go with Mozambique. No. No. Notice the one thing it did is it shook its head as it were at you. It um, animated from side to side. And notice what also happened. Mozambique, you can't click on again, and it looks different. So let's notice all these things because eventually we'll look and see how the code did it. All right, I'm going to go with New Zealand then, unless anyone else has a guess. No. Egypt or Ethiopia? Egypt. And that's right. Notice there was an animation as the next one comes in. Guatemala, Lebanon, Albania, or France? This is not Lebanon because Lebanon has a tree in it, if I'm not mistaken. Definitely this is not France. It's not France, because France is red, white, and blue, just sideways stripes or something. Not So that's Guatemala or Albania. I'm going to go with Albania. I'll go with Guatemala. And it is Guatemala. Okay, next one. My laptop must be running slow. Okay. Wow, there's no easy ones in this one. I'm going to go with Portugal. And it was right. Yay. This one I think I honestly know. Yeah, what is that? Is that Taiwan? That is pretty sure that's Taiwan. And it is. The way you're scored in this is how many guesses it takes you to, to get it right. So you go through 10 questions and you guess until you get them right. That is Nauru, which I don't even know what it is. Maldives, which I don't know what that is. Christmas Island, 
which I didn't know was a real place. I thought it was something from like the, the Frosty the Snowman <laughs> Christmas <laughs> special, you know, or... Yeah, exactly. Or Paraguay, which I have heard of. Um, wow. Okay, that's a good one. Let's go with Maldives. No. Nope. Nauru? Yeah. All right. Okay. Nigeria, Argentina, Falkland Islands, or Mexico? I think I got a guess on this one. Something that the British had. Something that the British had, yeah. Falkland Islands, we know they're involved, if you remember the war. That's right. Argentina, Sierra Leone, Bahrain, or Dominica? I don't think that's Argentina. I don't think that's Sierra Leone. I'm going to go with Bahrain. Dominica? Sierra Leone? If anyone is watching this from any of these countries, we're not insulting your country <laughs> by not knowing where it is. If anything, that's a statement of my own ignorance of geography. All right. Uh, Malaysia, Ivory Coast, Belize, or the Czech Republic? Don't think that's the Czech Republic. I don't think that's Ivory Coast or Malaysia. I'm going to go with Belize. And we're right. Switzerland, it's not that. Liberia, could be. Ecuador, could be. Vanuatu, Vanuatu. I'm going to go with Ecuador. Yeah. We're rallying. Yes. We can eliminate Egypt. Zimbabwe, Libya, or... Turkmenistan. I'm trying to get a closer look at what that is. I'm not sure if that's a dove or a seal. The animal over the star? Yeah, mine either. I'm going to go with Turkmenistan. Nope. Zimbabwe? Yes. All right. So I, it took me 17 guesses to get the 10 right. So 10 over 17 is 58%, I imagine, which is better than random, right? Because random would be 25%, <laughs> I think. Yeah. yeah. So OK, reset quiz. And I'm not, we're not going to play this again as fun as it is. Uh, but I'm going to click the little gearbox for the settings for this. Because we have choices. I don't know why we're going so slowly today. One of the choices is uh, how many options we have. So we had four options, which is a default. So we can make it easier or harder by giving either two, four, or six. Two, four, six, or eight buttons. Wow. So the default is four. If we make eight buttons, then we have a lot of choices. Finally, we can limit it to certain regions. So we can say that we want to do um, Africa, Asia, Europe, North America, Oceania, South America. So we can limit to what we will see. So maybe we don't want Europe, North America, Oceania. So we'll, this will limit the choices to things in Africa, Asia, and South America. And when we go back to this, we'll start the game, and we're limited to those choices. And now we have eight things to choose from, which would really probably have a bad score if we did this. All right, so let's look at what we have here, and let's look what's different about this and a few other things. So, first of all, let's look at our resources. One thing we have is an animation. All right? If I'm not mistaken, and it's been a little while since I looked at this code in depth, 
there's actually uh, a couple different animations that occur, a couple animations that occur different ways. That is probably the problem. It is demanding that I be on the network, on the internet. That might be one of the reasons that it is having performance issues. Okay, so there's actually an animation XML, all right? Um, this is actually pretty straightforward, all right? Um, the animation <coughs> consists of a series of translates in this case. And the translate allows us to change certain parameters associated with the um, animation. So let's look at this part of it first. Let's, let's do a part, make sure we understand it, then we'll go on to the next part. So this is the animation that occurs when the answer is wrong. All right? We have a set of things that are going to happen, and we're using decelerate. What decelerate is going to do is it is going to start fast and slow down. So the way that it's going to shake, if I can use this as the flag, it's going to initially go fast and then ease to a stop, initially fast and ease to a stop going back and forth. This translate allows us to change multiple properties. All right? The duration is the length in uh, milliseconds. So 100 milliseconds is a tenth of a second. And this is moving it across the x-axis. So this is moving it horizontally. So if we look, this animation takes a tenth of a second to go from the original x position of this element to negative 5% pixels, all right, or negative 5% P, all right. So what that means is it's going to go backwards, negative 5%. It's then going to go from negative 5% to 5%. So it's going to go, first thing is from the original position, it's going to go backwards, then it's going to go forward, and then it's going to go backwards again, all right? Notice that each one of the, that the last two things have offset, start offset. That is saying when, how long to wait before this part of the animation kicks in. This one has no start offset. That means that as soon as the animation starts, it does that. The next one has an offset of 100 milliseconds, which not coincidentally is the same of the duration of the first one. So in other words, this part of the animation doesn't start until this part of the animation finishes, which sort of makes sense, right? Because if you're changing the same thing, you don't want to send it to the left while you're sending it to the right, okay? You want to wait until that one piece is finished and then you want to go in the opposite direction. The last part has an offset of 200 milliseconds, which means that it's going to wait until the first two pieces are done. All right? So let's go and let's get these wrong, which shouldn't be hard to do. It'll be my luck I'll guess right in all these. So let's say that's Zimbabwe. If we notice it's going to go boom, boom, boom. All right? Boom, boom, boom. Let me Google to find out for sure what negative 5% P means. Oh, it's the stock abbreviation for Pandora, which was down 5% on one day. <laughs>
this amazingly enough is hard to find. I think, I'm not sure what that would mean. Negative 5% of the space, I would think that would mean. But again, I can't find a, a, a good answer to that. All right, let's play around with this. All right, if we want to make it slower, what would we do? What would make these numbers bigger? So if we do 1,000, wrong keyboard, 1,000, 1,000, and 1,000, we then better adjust the start offset because we don't want two things starting at the same time. All right, so if I do that, then it's very confusing to have the monitors sort of on top of each other when I have to move the mouse sideways to get it to work. All right, Bangladesh, boom, 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 boom. And it goes back to its normal spot. All right, let's look what other options we have for the interpolator. There's decelerate, linear, overshoot, bounce, and so on. Let's change this to the bounce interpolator. I take that you can see it bounce a little bit when it hits the end so you can have all kinds of fun with this this is one of those things where I probably spend more time talking about it than it's warranted just because it's fun to play with all right so what other transforms can we do I'm sorry, not transform, but translate animation. We can do from X, oh. from X to, from Y to, 
and we can also do rotates and we can also do scales so translate is moving it rotate is rotating it uh, alpha is making it um, fade in or fade out um, scale is making the size and so on so we can do any number of these things so I can have it move as it is getting smaller so I'm going to scale pivot is how it's going to get smaller around what point and I'm going to say this needs to take and I'm not going to give it an offset so it's going to happen as soon as this starts so let's try this curious why this is running so slow at any rate oh I know this one I think I think that's Argentina but I'm gonna guess wrong and say North Korea Mozambique <laughs> so it made it smaller as it's bouncing it back and forth those two effects didn't particularly go together so this is a lot of fun, all right? Think of how maybe you could use this in your blackjack game, all right, to spice things up. Uh, I'm not sure what your next assignment is. Your next assignment might just be to play with the blackjack game and add bells and whistles and so on. So animation, this is, this is again, something that I could probably play with all day uh, and never get tired of. But we unfortunately have to move on. Okay. So that's one of the things that we talked about. Let's see how that gets added to the things. If I look at the main activity, all right, let's actually look at our, um, Shake animation, we load that XML file and we set a repeat count for the animation to repeat. And then if they have a wrong answer, We associate that animation with the control, with the flag view. 
The nice thing about doing the animation this way is we can define an animation in the XML file and we can attach that animation to any of the views on the page that we want to. And it'll do the same animation. In this case, I attached it to the flag, but I could attach it to other stuff as well. I could attach it to, for example, We could attach it to the thing that says questions 1 through 10 if we wanted to, provided we had a pointer to it and so on down the line. So we have a questions number text view. So if they get it wrong, I'm going to change the animation to animate not just the flag view, but the little text that says what number question we're on. This is nice because we can then apply the same animation to different controls on the page. So I answer this and I get it wrong, notice that the question moves as well. All right? So that's sort of the advantage of doing it this way. I define an animation, but I don't define the animation specific to a control, and I can apply that to whatever control uh, that I want to. All right. There's another kind of animation, though, if we get it right. Let's look at how that is accomplished. So if we answer correctly, um, no, that's not right. Say Georgia. The screen animates out and animates back in. And then there's a two select second delay. We do this actually by creating a little thread and running that. And we run the method animate. is defined here, all right, where we set and create an animator class, we test whether that Boolean is set to true or not. If it is, it creates an animator to create a circular reveal. That's the one that goes in and goes out. Otherwise, it creates a circular reveal, but it doesn't load the next flag. We set the duration of how long it is, and then we start it. So I guess we found two different uh, An animator object, set the properties of it, and do an animation. The other is to create an XML file, which has different translates and... and um, changes of scale, changes of opacity, and rotations in it. So if we look up
Android Animator class. We can see the animations that we can do here. And so we can set the, the duration and so on. There's a set of utilities that sort of facilitates this by giving us things that are already predefined so we don't have to define the animation from scratch. So some of the examples of things that you can do, create a circular reveal. Don't tell me that's the only one in the util. Um, interesting. Maybe it is. All right, at any rate, two ways of creating an animation. You can create an animation object and specify the details of it, or you can specify an XML file that contains an animation. Colors, we've seen this before. Drawables, layouts. We actually have several layouts. One thing that this uses is this uses fragments. Fragments are like Think of them as being like a part of an, um, an, an, an activity. All right, so part of something that you're going to display all at once. So we have a main activity here. And we include content main. Content main contains this. And it contains a fragment. So when the app initially loads, this comes from the activity main. This comes from the fragment. And we load in different fragments as different as we go to different parts of the application and have different activities. Essentially, think of an activity as um, a screen that you're presenting where you want the user to do something. So as we switch between the game and the settings, what we're doing is we're reloading in a different fragment in sort of the frame of the page. So the content main consists of a fragment. This is very useful um, in the case of, like, you have a big screen. All right? What this does is this allows me to put the activities side by side. So... If I had this is an I, I know this doesn't react to the um, but this has a qualifier of uh, a screen width of more than 700 pixels wide and in landscape mode. Okay. Yeah, I yeah. And then that, that should give it to us. That's the whole idea of a fragment though. 
with a fragment, you can have different layouts, and the layout will contain maybe one fragment if it's in one mode, such as portrait mode, two fragments if it's in um, landscape mode. And then here we have the fragment for the um, main part of the game. Here we have the fragment for the settings. So if we're looking at stuff that's new, the use of fragments is something that's new in this application. And the fact that we're, we can piece together a screen by having sort of a shell of a screen and filling in the details with a fragment. We have a menu. We have our icons. We have different size icons depending on the app. We have our values, which include arrays, arrays for the different regions and so on, colors, dimensions, our strings, styles, and finally XML. One thing that you may have noticed as I close and reopen it, my preferences get stored. So this preferences XML is used to keep track of the preferences I selected so you can use it um, for uh, the next time that you run it. Shared preferences? Yeah, I believe this is going to take the shared preference, it's going to take the values from this XML file and put it in the shared preferences. Yeah, it is going to, it's going to use that. The other thing that we have is something that we should be familiar with if we looked at the blackjack example, is we have uh, the flags by folder in the assets. It, it likely would. It, it likely would. Um, let's see what they do. Do they have a... They do not have... They have a content main that puts those activities side by side, but they don't have one on an extremely high resolution. You would run the, into the problem that you had before. The only thing I could think of is that you could probably change the size of the image view, maybe, and maybe that would do it. Yeah. Well, that, that'll be something for us. We can look at that next week. We'll have, we'll have, to, we'll have to try this on a variety of platforms to, to make sure we understand exactly what's going on here. Notice the naming convention that we're using here. The folder contains the name of the region. And then the file name also contains the name of the region. They do some fancy footwork parsing the file name to know the region that it belongs to. All right, let's look at the main activity. Notice that there's really two activities. There is a main activity and there's a setting activity. Remember an activity is something that we show the user and expect them to do something at. It's like essentially one screen that you're showing the user. So there's a main activity which is the activity associated with the game and a settings activity which is associated with when they pick settings. However, notice that each one of these is also associated with a fragment. All right. Main activity. Let's take a look at what happens when this guy fires off. We set a couple of constants, choices and region. We have a Boolean to, uh, for phone device to force por portrait mode
All right, to force portrait mode. Boolean for did the preference changes and so on. These are attributes of the main activity. On create, we set the content view to activity main. We set our toolbar. We set support for that. We set the default preferences from that XML. And I think I was mistaken about what I said. I think I said that that XML file was used to store the preferences. That XML file is used to initialize the preferences. Yeah, so you got something called set default values from that. Right. And then we're registering on shared preferences change listener, preferences change listener. So it uses that to initialize it and then, and then on. It's and from then on, the yeah, exactly. From then on is based on your shared preferences. So that's, that's nice, though. That's easier than hard coding. Exactly. Exactly. We then determine the screen size. All right. This is something that we're doing uh, so that we can programmatically um, handle the screen size. This is something beyond setting the resource qualifier. So we're looking to see if uh, about the screen layout and the screen size. If it's a tablet, we set phone device to false. All right. If it's a tablet, you are allowed to then rotate it, and it will change the mode from portrait to landscape. If it's a phone device, the thought is it is so small, we're going to always lock it into the portrait mode. So that's something that we can't do simply by using the resource qualifiers. We can define a resource for portrait mode, we can define a resource for landscape mode, but if we want to programmatically say, hey, if you're in on a phone, something that isn't that big, don't allow it to go into port, uh, I'm sorry, don't allow it to get into landscape mode. So we set the portrait mode, uh, we set that phone device uh, property to true or actually it's defaulted to true, we set it to false if you are on a tablet. All right, and if you're on a phone, don't let it get into landscape mode. If preferences have changed, we're going to start the quiz. And notice, by default, we assume that the preferences have changed. Because preferences change has been, default, has been defaulted to true. So the first time through, preferences change, preferences change is going to be set to true. And what we're going to do is we're going to add the quiz fragment update the number of guesses, update the res uh, resources, and reset the quiz based on the new preferences. This happens initially, so when you first open the app, this, this fires off. All right. We're grabbing the main, act we're grabbing the fragment from the, uh, from the, um, main uh, layout. So we're grabbing that fra uh, fragment. We're calling methods on that fragment, which is, which are defined over here. And then we're calling reset the quiz. So if you notice, if I changed any of the preferences, this also fires off and it restarts the 
uh, game with the new one. All right, we're about done with today. We'll continue going over this one on Tuesday uh, to cover some more of the features on it. Uh, the big thing I wanted to get across today is um, the, the animation, how that's done, and also to introduce you to the notion of fragments. I will have created by next time uh, a, a bigger tablet that we can see the difference in, in better uh, and more vividly instead of like imagining it. All right, so I'll do that for next time and then we can play for it. All right, that's all I have.